Hello, my pretties. Oh, for goodness sakes. How are we all? I hope you're all fantastic, amazing, well, revved, and loving life, having fun, and all of that kind of shizzle. Um, I wanted to talk with you today about some stuff. Funny that, huh? Really? Um, me talking about stuff? I know, it's completely crazy and kind of harebrained. Who's watching? Hello? Oh man, you know what? Even when I press the thing to tell me who's here, it doesn't even tell me who's here. Hey, Andrea. Great to see you. I love, i going to say, I love how excited you are about the amplification project. I'm excited about it, but I kind of feel like your level of excitement has almost like matched my level of excitement about it. It is freaking exciting. I'm just, I'm beyond excited. Hey, Myrna, great to see you. All right, so what I'm just going to do as the Facebooks go and uh, push this out to more people, I can see some more people joining. Hello. Yes, it is 4.30 and it's not the coffee run. It is the I've just run the heck out of water run. I do still have... <laughs> Hi, how are you going? I repair. still got my water from when I came home from the States last week. I think that probably needs to go. I need some other, I need some other water. All right, I just wanted to share this live over on my personal profile just while we're live. So just give me a second. I'm going to click share. Hopefully that won't break. Hopefully that won't break the internet. Um... There we go. All right, live now. All right, so I was chatting with a client who I have been working with incidentally on and off since 2013. Can you believe that? This lady, um, just a beautiful and amazing woman. She, she and I have been working together since March 2013. And what year are we now? It's almost, oh my gosh, it must almost be to the day. Because what are we? So that's six years down the track. It's pretty freaking awesome, right? And she's been with me ever since, like, right, well, nearly right at the start. You know, not quite right at the start, but nearly right at the start. So there's a lot of iterations and you know, I sent out a blog yesterday about reinventions and, and things like that. Now, this woman who's ridiculously awesome, she's um, she had just been made redundant back in 2013. I think she'd just been made redundant, all the contract had finished and it wasn't renewed and she had to make a money somehow either go find another job or build this she had a piano teaching business piano lessons teaching piano lessons based in Adelaide um if yeah and she was like I've got to get that business working I've got to get it going and she's just gone seriously from strength to strength to strength year in year out the more that she has really kind of stepped into herself is just really super inspiring um kind of like the layers that get shed as you move through your journey. If you're committed to that, if you're really committed to your own personal growth and your business growth, then you can't possibly be the same person today as what you were when you first started. No different to the being the 28th of March, 2019 right now. And if you were to go fast forward into, you know, three years into the future, and you're looking back, you're not going to be the same person in three years time as you are today when you're committed to your own growth and almost like your own self-actualization, which is really kind of cool. So what I was chatting with her about, she's gone, you know, I really want to hit this particular number in her business. And I'm just going to talk some random numbers. These are not her numbers. And one of the things, like, let's say that you wanted to go from doing $150,000 a year to doing $300,000 a year. The mindset, hey, Cheeky, great to see you. The mindset of going from 150 to 300 or being a $300,000 a year business owner is different to a $150,000 a year business owner. If you're in a job 
I mean, maybe you're an entry level person. I remember when I when I first worked at the the bank, I worked for Westpac for 12 years. Loved the shit out of my job there. Did a whole range of different things. But when I first started, I was a teller and I loved it. I loved being able to talk to all the people, you know, don't keel over in shock. I love talking to all of the people and, you know, the business people that would come in and had a great old time doing that. And as I progressed within the organization, going into different role and working my way up till I could really go no further without going into like a regional manager level, the thing for me was that I, it was a very different mindset to being a teller who was being paid, I think back then I might've been on, I don't know, like $35,000 a year maybe to when I left, it was about a hundred thousand dollar package by the time you, you know, with the bonuses and rah, rah, rah. So the mindset was very different. The actions were very different. Now, one of the things that I wanted to talk with you about today is around the steps, right? Now, lots of us go, okay, and Joe and I were talking about this this afternoon. It's like, all right, so what are the steps required in order to, let's say that we're going to double the business. If I want to double the business, what are the steps required? Now, you've got some options here. The logical steps, first of all, you could double your marketing, you could double your clients, you could double your activity, like in terms of the way that you show up online and everything else like that, double the leads, double your sales closing, uh, double your closing rate, do more with what you've got, like that kind of thing. They are all really logical ways. And the $150,000 a year business owner or the, the $30,000 a year teller back when that was the, the entry level wage, it was like, all right, you can only logically think about the logical steps that you're aware of while you're at that level. You can't think about what are the steps that I would take because it's not logical. When I'm a $300,000 a year business owner or when I'm a million dollar a year business owner, what are the steps that I would take? Well, you're not going to know because you're not there yet, right? So trying to identify and work out exactly what is going to get you to where you need to be logically is not the only thing that we need to consider. Yes, it is something for those of you who maybe like myself and certainly like Joe, we like to know, okay, so what do the numbers look like? You know, what could the strategy be? And that is one little element of it. I talked in my blog yesterday, the really long one. Um, I think I worked out it's about nine word document pages long at a 12 point, 12 size font. Uh, just like it was just many, many, many words. And I, I said the same thing to Jo and she said, yeah, but it's not, I don't always sit down and read all of them, Nicola, but this time I actually sat down and read the whole thing. And I've got, oh, awesome. Whatever message she needed in there was like what she got. Hey, Tamara, great to see you. And the, one of the points that I made in there was around Indiana Jones, right? So let me know if you have not seen The Last Crusade, because we're going to have to do something about that. Maybe we need to organize an entrepreneurial movie night or something, because that's just like a classic that needs to be watched. But what I love about The, the Last Crusade is the scene where when Indiana is at the in the cave right and he knows that there's a there's like a, I don't know what the name of it let's call it an altar room because I don't know what to call it and it was where the holy grail was suspected to be now when they got to the opening I haven't watched this for years so this is just my recollection when they got to the opening the one of the first things that they needed to do was to walk on some steps right and spell out tamara she said she hasn't oh my gosh when you make it to the may event we might need to do a movie night or something in the penthouse and maybe we'll need to watch it because that's just like oh, sacrilege so anyway, like when he's here and there's like two things that happen. Number one, he had to spell out, I think it was Jehovah um, in on the letters on the on the steps. And if you got the wrong one, like the step fell out and from underneath you. That's not the bit that I wanted to talk about. The next one was where I think they had to cross over a ravine 
and you had to have complete and utter faith because when he stepped out, there was nothing there, right? So, hey, Georgina. So he stepped out and the, the path appeared, like that footstep appeared, the, the thing appeared underneath and then he took the next step and it appeared and the next step and it appeared. But you can't find the thing to support you until you take the step, right? And so this is really where like we get into this conversation about faith and about we've really got to, to trust that the next step will be revealed when it's time. So some of the things that we talked about, Joe and I today, was the fact that, you know, she doesn't really have a, a capacity in order for her to double her business She would and, and hit the numbers that she wants to hit. She'd actually have to take on a number of students that is not physically possible for her to deliver to in the way that it's being done. It's just not even an option. So we're having this conversation about, well, you know, what are we going to sell? Like we've got to find, there's at least another hundred grand. There's like a hundred grand gap crevice, right? So if you imagine that this thing that Indy was facing, there's like, there's just this big crevice where there's nothing there except just, you know, you look down and it's just ridiculously deep and you die if you take the wrong step. You know, it was like, it's like this, it's like this hundred thousand dollar gap between, and that's not to her double her business. It's just what we were looking at in this example. So you've got a hundred grand, but we don't know how it's going to happen. And a lot of us go, okay, well, to make a hundred thousand dollars, I could sell 10 things at a thousand, a oh, hundred things at a thousand. I could sell X number of widgets at $50 things. I could do however many sales at this, I could do 10 sales of 10 grand, I could do one sale of 100,000, so on and so forth, right? And we kind of go, when we go into that place, it, it kind of limits or it can limit the ideas and the idea potential and the income potential for what could actually come through. And I started to throw some different ideas at her. I've gone, well, we could sell this a membership thing that she's got. We could do that. I said, you also don't know where that extra money that we want to be able to generate so that you can hit this particular goal. We don't know where that's going to come from yet because we haven't had the step. The pathway hasn't revealed itself to us. Now, I know that when things are tough, that it can be hard, right? It can be really hard because you're like gosh, done it, you know, just show me the freaking path already. And I'm happy to run, walk, crawl, bleeding, you know, whatever. I'm happy to go and do whatever it is that needs to be done. But sometimes it just doesn't work like that. And I get that that can be a challenge and it can be hard and it can be really dis freaking heartening when you're the one that feels like you're doing all the freaking work. So one of the big things that I shared with her was what I've got on my little post-it note that lives on my desk at the moment. And that is a little mantra that I write out every day. I've got my journal right here. I write it out in my journal. If I feel like fear is kicking in, I'm like, oh, hell no, come back to this. And um, it just helps to kind of keep things into perspective, right? Now, understand, Andrea, I totally get you because that is the way that my brain has worked for a really, really long time. Um, for me, I think that really comes from a place because I never, I'm not like that naturally. I think that actually for me came from a place of survival. Um, some of you know about previous relationships of mine that have been particularly abusive and, and things like that. And so I think that part of that is that I look for certainty in everything. So I like to really create systems and order and know, you know, what things are where and how things add up. And it was part of the way that I became really successful in corporate as well, because again, survival, you know, your, your bonus relies on you being able to meet your numbers, right? And so knowing, well, if I do 10 appointments a week, and I do seven applications. I know that three of those people are end up going to borrow money from us. You know, I'll hit my target. It's just, it's a lay down misere. It's just going to happen. So what we want to really do is still 
understand what some of the logical numbers might be based on who we are today, based on our experience right now, based on the knowledge that we have right now, right? But you might pick up, um, I bought I bought some books in the last little bit. I bought a book called The Magician's Way. Someone posted about that and I'm like, oh, I think I might like to read that. So, you know, I might read that and just go, oh my God, like there's the, there's the thing that I need. Hey, Joe. Uh, I've also bought, I saw a book on the desk of a friend's house while I was there, The Science of Getting Rich. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to read that too. So like, we don't know yet what knowledge is going to be made available to us when we decide what it is that we want. So where I'm going with this is if we go, okay, in order to manifest $100,000, create $100,000, don't get caught on the manifesting word because we don't just sit there and go, oh, I'm going to make $100,000. And then you go and lie by the side of the pool and just look fabulous. And then you get a knock on the door with a $100,000 check. You know, if it works like that for you, go for it. But for most of us, we've got to take some kind of action to bring those financial things into our worlds and into our lives. So we can logical around it based on the information we've gotten. That's fine. But there comes an element or there comes a time actually where we've got to acknowledge and be completely okay with the fact that we don't know yet what we don't know and that you've just got to keep taking one more step and just take one more step and just take one more step knowing that the next step that we need to take will be shown to us by God, universe, source, whatever language you use or by intuition that you need to take in order for you to get what it is that you want or whatever is yours by divine right or something better, right? More or better, uh, this or better, like whatever it is that you're trying to bring on in. So what I've got on my post-it note that I thought I would share with you is this. I will follow trust. I will follow faith. I will follow soul. I will follow alignment. I will thrive. I will prosper. I will be and then do always. I am this, I am. So I think that that's actually like a really important thing in breaking one of those habits, uh, breaking the habit of uh, logic, relying solely on systems, just going, okay, well, I, I mean, I know I'm the queen of the number, right? I know, for instance, that if I have something for $6,000, I sell 83 of those a year, I make half a million dollars. It's easy. You know, no brainer. I can logic my way out of anything. I can numbers my way out of anything. But if I want to do something in a way that I haven't done before and that I haven't proven to myself that works, it requires a holding of the line. It's almost like that, that last crusade where you've got to follow the steps. You've got to dodge some bullets every now and again and those chung, 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 chung. Hey, Ainsley, you know those, the, those metal things that like come, came down from the ceiling and it's like they're going to chop their head off and you've got to like jump through and then jump through and then jump through. You know, you've got to get through all of those and that might be around, you know, a shitty client or it might be about your ads not being approved or it might be about you think that you had to do things in a certain way and you know what, you got knocked around a bit because actually trying to do things like somebody else rather than doing things in a way that feels really aligned and feels really great for you, yeah? Maybe you do a Facebook Live and nobody shows up and for some reason you make that mean that you don't have it, you know, whatever it means, like whatever you'd make it mean, which is not true actually, right? So we've got, we've got to have faith. I talked about this yesterday. Hey, Chris, great to see you. We've got to have faith. We've got to have strategy as well to provide a little bit of confidence in, well, you know what? I, I do know how to do this. I do know how to make this, but I am also going to completely follow trust and faith and make sure that you're working everything, all of the resources that you've got available to you, you're making use of those all the time. Yeah. Like I think that's something that's just, it's critical, actually. So, the phone is ringing. 
Gotta George Michael that shit, Andrea. Exactly. You're completely right. Gotta have faith, faith, faith. Um, so yeah, so that's that. I think the other piece that we've got to look at is also around consistency. You know, momentum takes time to build. It is a law of the universe. Momentum takes time to build. It doesn't have to take a long time, but it does require you to show up. It requires you to be consistent. It requires you to have faith and trust that the work that you're doing now, every little, every little piece of work that you're doing right now is building up, stacking up, helping build your profile, helping build your visibility, helping build your personal brand, helping build your notoriety, helping the people who are just sitting there waiting to hear your soul speak to them. Like if we think about it like that, like they are just sitting there waiting for the right voice with the right message at the right time to help move them forward. If you can be that person by consistently showing up, doing your thing, being you, being the best, most authentic, high value version of you every freaking day, you know, it, it will work for you. There is no way it can't. There's absolutely no way it can't. So long as you're letting people know, you know, how they can work with you. Because <laughs> otherwise, like if you're not like, okay, so, you know, this is how we can work together, then it's kind of like doing a silly, you know, brand awareness campaign where you put your face up on a big billboard and you're like, here I am, I'm, I'm visible, everybody. And you're trying to like, like mind, uh, mind program everybody into paying you money. Like it doesn't work like that. Like they've got to, they've got to know what it is that they need to do, which is actually a really awesome segue into the amplification project. So I am going to pop in here. We, a, a, a link in here about the amplification project. So what this is, it's a program that I've outlined that I'm ridiculously so freaking excited about. I don't think that worked. Um, we start on the 7th of April and it's a 21 day. It's almost like a boot camp, actually, the way that I'm thinking about it. What I'm going to do, and it will sort of, I oh know it did work. It'll become um, a bit more, not apparent, but it'll become a bit more fleshed out by the time we actually get into it. Because one of the things that I'm really passionate about, I was talking to a lady about this yesterday, is making sure that everything that I deliver and do is done in a way that helps you to be able to implement, right? You don't need just more information. It's not just the information that you need. It's also the ability to execute. And most people need personalization for that. Most people, not everybody, but most people require personalization. So if you imagine that throughout these 21 days in the amplification project, what we'll do is like we'll roll up on a live stream uh, most days and you'll get your marching orders. It'll be like, right, guys, this is what oh, girls, people, humans, amazing beings, leaders, masters, magicians, you know, whatever it is that you do. You're showing up and it's like, okay, this is what you need to go and do today. This is what you need to journal on. This is what you need to prepare. This is what you need to write. Not like write like me, but this is what you need to do today. And what we know is science shows us is that it takes 21 days to break a habit and also to make a new habit. So over the 21 days, we're going to be building up your, your, your content creation muscle. Right? So this is all about you being visible. It's all about you reaching the people that you want to be able to reach. Um, it's really freaking exciting. I am so excited. It came, it was, you know how like I've been talking about following faith and, you know, intuition and just dropped the book, uh, you know, trust and faith, intuition, alignment and things like that. I didn't know two weeks ago that this program would even exist. It literally came out in my journal while I was in Carlsbad playing with my American dog, Leonard, who's just the most cutest thing on the face of the planet. He was sitting there. He's blind. He can't see anything, but he's just so cute. 
and I had my journal out, I had my computer sitting next to me and I was journaling about something. I think I'd just had a meltdown, to be honest. And I'd kind of repatterned all of that. I'd gone through and done everything I needed to do with the thing that I had a meltdown about. And I was like, what is it that I need to say today? What needs to come out? And that's how the amplification project was born. So, hey, Joe. So like the stuff that I teach you is literally the stuff that I'm practicing, living, breathing, eating, consuming, immersing myself in every single day. And I think that's something that's super important, right? Like we want to work with people who walk their talk. We want to work with people who are leading the way and demonstrating that they fully embody what they what they believe in and what they're preaching. So that is me for today and my little sermon about the last crusade, about having faith, got to have faith. Uh, and, you know, sometimes the steps aren't actually the steps that you'll be taking, but you've got to just trust. It's the key thing, guys. You've just got to trust that if you're feeling called to do something, if you're feeling a compulsion, not a repulsion, although that could work in as well. If you're feeling a compulsion to do something or say something, the second you squash that, you've just essentially said no to intuition. You've shut that down. So it might not necessarily be something that you go and share out on the internet, but it's certainly something that if you're hearing, if you're hearing things or if you're getting messages that are coming through that are kind of guiding you into a particular way or a particular place, then you've got to take a listen to it. And it's funny because this is what people often say to me is just like, Nicola, I was sitting there like watching your stuff going like, yes, 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 yes. So I couldn't not say yes. Not that I'm trying to make you do that. But if you feel like this is going to help you, then, you know, it'd be a pleasure to, it'd be an absolute pleasure and an honor to serve you and help you. Andrea, then voices won't shut up. Yeah, there's a cast of thousands in here. It's really quite hilarious. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I'm going to go and talk to the famous Joe Muirhead of entrepreneurial clinician fame. I get her all to myself for the next hour. I can find my headphones and I can't wait. So you can see the link in there. If you're not sure if the amplification program uh, project is right for you, message me. You know, if it means that we've got to hop on a call, then we'll hop on a call. Like, it's all good. All good in the hood. I just can't wait to help you get out there, get visible so that you can help the people that you're here to help. They're sitting out there waiting for you. All right. Have a great night. I'll talk to you soon.